Hi, I'm Lily Norwood. By the time ninth grade rolled around, there were three KDs in our grade. With two of them new that year, and one of them a newcomer in eighth grade, I figured there'd be some confusion over which Katie was which. Each Katie, however, quickly distinguished herself, and Katie Hyatt was no exception. In her four short years here, Katie has ingrained herself in the fabric of St. Mary's with leadership positions ranging from community fund to mock trial to bellet. A member of Mu Alpha Theta, Cleosophic Society, and Cum Laude, Katie is undoubtedly one of the brightest people in our grade, and I can't wait to hear what word she has to enlighten us with today. So please give it up for Mary Catherine, or as you all know her, Katie Hyatt. I don't know how I didn't realize I was too far behind. Perhaps John sped up at the last minute, or perhaps I had been jogging along his bike for too long and was more focused on breathing than catching him. I wasn't expecting anything to go wrong. John was riding beautifully. It was our first outing since his graduation from bike camp the victory lap aboard his conquered mechanical steed. The scene was fittingly regal. The sun shimmered benignly on John's crown, made of the finest of protective lime green plastics. <laughs> the neighborhood saluted him with a profound silence, as if in awe of the event. But in the span of a second or two, the bike gave way to a violent skid and John with it. My heart seemed to rise to my throat, seemed to choke me, as my brother and his bike collided with sun-roasted asphalt. I was lagging too far to make the recovery. Then the wailing began. John's every breath was devoted to one even, indefatigable, despairing note. I wasn't there to catch him. That thought the wailing, they made my chest heave, my eyes water, my voice tremble. Because this wasn't any boy, this was John. John is the sort of person that is just really easy to love. Just his appearance is charming. He's blessed with more than his fair share of freckles and thick brown hair. His green eyes are perpetually locked in an earnest expression. When he's praised, he has the most endearing spasms. He looks down like he's trying to hide a grin while his legs quiver and his arms dance near his chest. He laughs easily and is a constant source of amusement, primarily because he sees the world through a delightfully quirky lens. John has also overcome profound challenges. Having missed almost all of his developmental milestones, He's been shuttled from one form of therapy to another for as long as I can remember. In spite of all the tests that the litany of professionals in his life have performed, John evaded his diagnosis of autism until last year. All of this speaks to the despair of the crash. This was oh so careful John, the clumsy one with brightly decorated orthopedic braces the collector of icons of safety like fire alarms and smoke detectors. The proverbial saying is, when you fail, try, try again. When you fall, get up. But tell me, O oh archive of oft-repeated sayings, what do I do when I fail someone else? Someone who I and everyone around me can't motivate it can't motivate to try again. After repeated reassurances about my blamelessness in the great topple of two years ago, I still lived with my own personal judgments. As we stowed our bikes for the season, I decided the proverb carried, when you fail someone, try, try again. I researched the nonprofit bike camp John had attended that taught children with developmental disabilities to ride. There were no camps scheduled within 100 miles. 
To bring it back to Memphis, I contacted the former sponsor and others who were interested, but they all wanted someone else to take the reins. I knew we needed momentum, so I secured a potential site list, applied for grants, received a sizable one, and hunted down volunteers before I reached out again to this disconnected group. Each contact then stepped up to join the board and personally led some portion of the effort. So the proverb does carry, when you fail someone else, try, try again. And that makes sense. What could be a worthier object of perseverance and tenacity? What could be a worthier object of trying again than the care that we have for each other? I can't always be the sister John needs me to be. I'm not a superhero, neither is anyone else. I think we all fail the people we love most dearly now and then. I let John fall, and I couldn't get him back up again. But as Chrisana so eloquently stated, sometimes a happy ending just depends on where you stop the story. I'm glad I didn't let the story end there. It ends with John and dozens of other children up on bikes. It ends with John back on his two-wheeled throne wearing his lime green crown. Thank you. <laughs>